Hey, this is Joe Stump from Alcatraz, Joe Stump's Tower of Babel, and a host of other things, and you're watching Duke TV. Pay attention. I love touring in Europe. And you know, this time I believe maybe four shows in France, I think all together, so that was great. And it's a nice package with us in girls' school because it's like a mixture of different fans. You have people with Motorhead t-shirts there and people with rainbow t-shirts and you know. So, so you know, it seems to work out pretty good. Like many musicians, I was, um, quite busy during the pandemic recording. Between 2019 and 2021, I recorded my last solo record. So yeah, I had finished the guitars quite a while ago. And now that, you know, things are ramping back up, the rest of the band, have, you know, are just finishing up everything they've had to do. The direction is like my solo records, I could have something that sounds like on my last one, I have this thing called the Snake Charmer's Fate, very rich Eastern sounding Richie Blackmore thing. You know, Tower of Babel is much more focused. It's definitely in that early Dio era rainbow, early Dio solo stuff, kind of walks the line between being a hard rock record and a metal record. The band had a big falling out with our last singer, Chaba Svekin. But now we have um, Joe Amori, and he had played in the Vivaldi Metal Project. He did some work with, um, with Maestro Mysteria on that. And when we were looking for a new singer, the Maestro suggested him. So he sent me like, you know, him singing with the Temple of Dio thing. You know, I was instantly sold. Okay, this guy sounds just like Dio. Great, <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't have to twist my arm. So it worked out really quite nicely. Holy Hell really did quite a bunch of great things and played many, you know, like I, I remember being on a tour playing all, you know, all arenas and stuff and sport halls all throughout, you know, in Germany and the Czech and stuff like that. And many, many big metal festivals. I have a lot of really good memories of that. And it's a shame that the band had the falling out with Magic Circle and then the big lawsuit that, you know, took like a decade or whatever. As a friend of mine that's a lawyer says, you know, the, the, the wheels of justice turn slowly. But now I think the lawsuit's all like, that's all, you know, over now. So we're talking about ramping stuff back up. And we had like a whole record recorded and then we had recorded it with Magic Circle. So they own the masters. So we re-recorded the whole record and you know, it sounds great. So maybe that's gonna see the light of day too. I've been guitar obsessed since I was young. You know, what do I like to do when I wake up? I like to clean up a little exercise. And what am I listening to when I'm exercising? You know, metal and guitar driven music. Um, I'm having coffee and answering some emails. What's playing in the background? You know, it's, it's not, you know, granted, I love to listen to Tchaikovsky too. I like to listen to Vivaldi. I like to listen to Bach. But, you know, I, I, I love to listen to Rainbow. I love to listen to Accept. The Joe's Deli thing was not my idea. What happened was in the fall of 2019, we were at a, on a tour in the UK, you know, when we were still playing with Graham and, and you know, and we went into a supermarket. So I was, I know I'll get some sandwich meats and then I will have some of that after the show as like my dinner or whatever. Jimmy Waldo was, you know, the keyboard player from Alcatraz was s sitting next to me. He asked me to make him a sandwich and then I started doing it and, 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 and then Giles, Alcatraz's manager, started recording it. That's how the idea of Joe's Deli started. 
and then it's all about like the different types of things you have to you know that you eat when you're on tour or like what's available and you know the backstage you know foods and all that and, and you know and, and so it really took on a life of its own then the label silver lining they thought it was the greatest thing like on this last tour they were concerned that the, enough joe's delis are going to be shot on the tour so we cut the little trailer like it's like a like an actual tv show and then before one show we recorded the joe's deli theme you know when dookie sang it and giles actually wrote the wrote the <laughs> the words to it and dookie's one of the one that came up with the joe's deli fill your belly thing so it was, it was really quite funny joe's deli.